Hello everybody of the internet, it's Petey. I got my wonderful garden behind me as you can see and uh, things are still surviving. I got my hoodie on and uh, it's like the first time I'm wearing, you know, long sleeves for once. That, that's testament of things are getting colder. I have not greenhoused anything yet because building is intimidating and I always avoid uh, learning about something for whatever reason. I think it's the analysis paralysis taking over and deciding for me whether I learn something new or not or, you know, go against the grain of something. I've also been working a lot towards uh, revamping my whole uh, YouTube platform, you know, doing a bunch of different ventures to see if, if, if that could get me more subscribers. You know, it's been pretty barren on the internet for small YouTube channels. I've said this before. I digress from that. Let's take a look at what we got going on. And I'll try to make this video a bit shorter. The last video was more like, ooh, look at what I got. Ooh, pretty stuff. Uh, but I, I think I'll make it a lot shorter. So without further ado, I'll show you a bit of my uh, something else that I have cooking, other things that I have rigged up to help make the gardening experience a little bit easier. So let's get to it. So here we have my, my handy dandy faucet and I'm just going to do that. We got the sprinkler system going over to the garden. It eventually reaches over. But I'm going to try and pass through here and try not to get wet. <laughs> here, let me, this is my potato plant, by the way, and that's actually growing really healthy. I'm going to continue uh, hilling that more. I heard a crack in this stem, so I'm worried that I killed it off. See, look, it's kind of droopy. Oh, it broke off. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's hanging on by a thread, but that one right there is relatively uh, healthy. You know, and as we're watering, tomatoes, of course, are the predators and the uh, dominant force in this whole garden. But as you can see, it's kind of raggedy. That's because, and you can also see, uh, <laughs> The, the reason for that being, look at how dry, bone dry that soil is. I really, I really got to step my watering game up, that's for sure. Oh, oh God, I'm getting wet. <laughs> but you know, even though there are weeds growing out in the middle, you know, I'm just going to let it go, let it do its thing. These tomatoes, these cherry tomato plants are really like branching out and like going to the ground like nature wants to intend it to. This is almost horizontal right here, this, this tomato cage. So I definitely, uh, I said in the last video that I need a higher raised bed so that there's more uh, a balance in the roots. So there's more of a foundation to go off of. Otherwise it just droops over like that. Not complaining. You know, I might do something where I flip it upside down like a, like a hydroponic rig where I have like a, reverse tree. I've seen something like that done for tomato plants. This is only phase one. This is only year one. So like, I'm gonna do a bunch more research next spring and uh, really revolutionize this garden. Let's see what goodies we got. So I'm gonna let this water for a little bit longer and then I'll return back to showing all the goodies we got from this wonderful first rig. So I'll leave it here and then we'll look at everything else. All right, see you in a bit. Okay, okay so we're back. I took a long soak for the, these guys. I didn't go too long because there's some, uh, I don't know if it was a science teacher that told me about this or if it was somebody that I saw on YouTube explain this to me. But when you have soil that's bone dry and you don't want to flood the, uh, you, you don't want to overwater it. It's easier to overwater something. It's kind of like, you know, when you, um, like when you go on like a, th like a 30 hour fast or something like that, and you just starve yourself for like a day or two, you know, or religiously fast, whatever you feel. And then you pig out on something that's not healthy to do to uh, eat a bunch of stuff. You know, as we move forward, we got some some smaller zucchinis going. It's getting colder. I don't know if I should just botch this whole thing or if I should just, uh, um, cause I got weeds growing everywhere. This is kind of looking raggedy, but like maybe I should just put some frost cloth over it, call it a day. I got this eggplant. This is heavy. Uh, and I think, 
I think I would have to pick this because it's reaching the the ground. And it probably wants to. It's splitting right here, as you can see. So I think I'm gonna grab this. Actually, yeah, it's opening up a lot. So I'm gonna take this. Uh, I'm disappointed in how small the eggplants got. Unfortunately, <laughs> like. <laughs> um, oh, oh, there it goes. There we go. All right. Look at that. Kind of okay looking. I mean, it's red, you know, like it's the member of the nightshade family. So I thought it'd be more purple. I don't know if these are mold spots. Hope they aren't. But, uh, <laughs> or I hope they're pollination marks. That, that's what I'm going to say. That's how, what I'm going to lie to myself as <laughs> to, so I can eat this thing. Well, I'm going to set this down. I'll be back in a sec. But uh, pretty okay eggplant. Gonna do a lot better next year, that's for sure. Yeah, let's let's look at everything else. Next, we have this lovely acorn squash that I said I would pick in a couple days, but it's been a week, <laughs> or more than a week actually. Um, so I'm gonna. It feels a little soft-ish, soft-ish. Not not like it's like it's still hard. Like it's hardy, skin's still tough, but you know I could see this, you know, getting too squishy too soon. Hopefully we'll get more acorn squashes as the season progresses. But yeah, I'll uh, wash this off and we'll keep going. So I'm looking at this pickling cucumber and it's it's got some it's got some goobies. This this cucumber plant, as I said last week, oh there's there's another little guy growing. So I think I might pick this one because it's kind of getting getting a little funky, even though it's tiny. And uh, just so I could give this one a little bit more energy so this doesn't sap too much energy from that guy. So yeah, I'll, I'll take this one. It's getting... My sister's been making a brine for all of our pickles. I kind of want to double time it because these pickles are actually getting bad. I don't want the whole uh, uh, gardening venture to be futile, you know? But uh, yeah, that's, that's not good. But you know, end of season, not complaining. Oh, there's another flower right here of the... Look at that, that's beautiful. So silly me, I didn't hit record. <laughs> but I, I got this eggplant. Um, and I'm having a bit of immediate regrets when it comes to this beauty. Because I, I thought that these were splitting to go into seed or something like that. Or to, uh, you know, continue the growth of the eggplants. You know, to grow into new seeds and new plants and all that stuff. But um, I think these just might be pollination marks. I'm not sure. Like, what does this look like to you folks? Leave your comments below. Did I make a good decision or not? <laughs> it's too late now. But I will say I'm in a desperation mode because of how cold everything is getting and how quickly everything is uh, starting to die off. So I kind of want to get as much as I can out of this season because I started so late in the game. And I see an acorn squash. You know, I thought acorn squashes actually got a little bit bigger. Okay, this is starting to yellow out. I might actually, I might actually give that a bit longer. I'm going to flip it over. You know how like usually when it discolors that I'm noticing, this is where it wants to go to seed. So it gets tender around here. So that's Mother Nature saying, you know, it's getting tender. T time to open up, I guess, and release the seed. That sounds graphic, but, you know, that's that's nature, man. Uh, <laughs> um, so I think if I flip this, it might actually prolong the uh, inevitable of decaying. And then maybe it'll grow a little bit bigger and I could pick it then. Because I actually expected this to get it to the size of a pumpkin. Because I don't really know enough about acorn squashes. Like, <laughs> that's how ignorant I am with some things. I definitely know now what everything is. I still don't know what this pink thing is. They've been growing everywhere. Like, all, all this stuff. Like, is this medicinal in any way? Do I need to keep this? I don't know what it is. Does it protect anything? Or is it just a... Uh, weed. I'm not. I'm not going to be too harsh on this, considering that I'm. I'm a newbie. These leaves, still diseased, but still beautiful. Like that. That flowering, 
is like nature. We got a little zucchini going. Um, moving on to the wonders of the. This is practically a rainforest of. There's another zucchini that looks like a droopy wiener. And I'm going to keep that wiener going as long as I can. Because that, that seems like, since it's elevated, I think that'll actually do a lot. Like, it'll prolong its life. That's that's going to be my educated, not-so-educated guess on the matters. Yeah, this is going to this is gonna poop out, I have a feeling. But definitely still a lot of leafage for this one zucchini plant. Very happy about that. And yeah... Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking like the tomatoes were dominant in the beginning. Now I think the zucchini's taken over because they're, they're a bit more hardy. I'm starting to learn when it comes to um, colder weather. Let's see if there's anything in here. Ooh. Oh, crap. Oh, that was a smaller. Oh, that was the other acorn squash. I think I'll let that go for another week. And then we just got some cherry tomatoes that are mostly green. Right there, mostly green. And like a couple of ones that are turning red. Which I'm happy about. I think I'll pick this one. Or actually these two. <laughs> if you could see that. And that's that should be good. That's a beautiful uh, pair of cherry tomatoes. Don't forget to cough. <laughs> Turn to the side and cough. <laughs> Still strong presence of tomatoes, which I'm happy about. Definitely happy about. There's one over there that could could be ready in a couple days. More so than this one right here. That one back there. Zoom in a bit. That, that guy right there. Just to be clear. But other than that, you know, like the zucchines are coming in really nice this time of year. I've got my cherry tomatoes. Going to get whatever I can out of those. Then we'll move on to the Revolution Garden. I'll see you in a sec. So upon walking to the Revolution Garden, you know, these hibiscus flowers are beautiful and I'm surprised that they've lived this long. You know, maybe it's my lack of confidence in, in nature because uh, I've noticed that like through agricultural anything, a lot of farmers, they like coddle the crap out of their foods and it's like you could just put, them in, put it in the ground and it'll, bleh, it'll grow and like you could just be a complete dummy and it'll work. You know, I'm surprised at this hibiscus, you know, I'm assuming, see, I don't know enough about botany at all, but like, I'm assuming it comes from like a tropical region because it, isn't that like the, um, isn't that like a symbolic flower for like Polynesia, you know, and here I am in the Northeast East growing it and it's still like a beautiful flower, both of them, you know, then moving over to over here, I got tons of stuff that's like overgrown and like, oh, there's weeds growing everywhere and like, that's because, you know, like over here, here's the southern sun, blocked by all these trees. And then as you're going over, tons of blockages of trees. And then once it gets to over here, then these guys get sunlight. And their, their root growth is limited too because of how, you know, how tiny the pots are. So it's like a, a lose, 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 you know, and no wonder there's tons of weeds growing everywhere. Like this dill... Look at that dill trying to stretch out there, trying to like get some, get some, some good old sunlight. You know, you can't, you can't deprive your children of nutrients. And I am a terrible father this year. I actually got to water those, but I'll do that later. That's the only place that I could put it. So don't, don't sue the me uh, messenger, I suppose. And this one I, is riddled with a bunch of stuff. So what I've been doing is I've just been emptying these out and I've been taking the extra dirt and, and I've actually been taking some of the weeds and I've just been putting them in compost. And then the extra dirt, I just put it on top of the uh, potato plant so it can hill more. And that's definitely important for growing potatoes. And I don't know how resilient the potatoes will be, but from the earlier shots, the potato plants look wonderful. For me, not knowing enough about potatoes other than the hilling technique and uh, you know, a flurry of other things, that's for sure. Nutrient compositions and stuff like that. Going back to the Rev Garden. Just walking up here, approaching it, I'm just like, look at all of this. Look at all this gross 
algae growth and I'm I don't know if that's because of my secret formula that I got from the Rev Garden. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm kinda going at an angle, but uh the lighting isn't really as good. But there's like a a solid line. Yeah, that's a good image. That's a good shot. There's like a solid line of algae buildup and I'm like this is where I lose out because I don't know anything about aquariums and I'm like what do I do with algae and it's like this this is something where I'm like oh god no uh, I don't know if I should panic or if I should just be like ah oh, it's just it's just algae you know it's mother nature blah 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 you know the same argument I have with uh, the weeds over there over there uh, being this this first project you know over there where I uh, neglect weeding at all. For the Rev Garden, I, I tend to spoil it. Well, not spoil it, I actually tend to it. Um, but it, it goes to show when you have nutrient deficiencies in your garden, it will show in the form of not only lack of growth. Oh, look at that, there's a bee. Look at that. Because the, the basil's pollinating. Being, being pollinated and all that cute stuff. See, look at me, I'm an environmentalist trying to help the bee population from the, from the evils of the world. And he's just wiggling his butt into the, into the flowers so he can make us some honey, so he can make some honey for his, his queen. I couldn't be a worker bee. That's like full on communism right there. Where everybody's just like thoughtless and they're all cogs in the machine. Like if that bee had a bit more sentience like humans, it would kill itself. Just, <laughs> I didn't mean to go morbid like that. <laughs> that came out dark, jeez. Well, look at it, look at, look at that. It's just a bee being a bee. Just gonna let him be. Wow, that was a bad pun. I apologize for that. I uh, forgot where I was going with this. But yeah, the negligence of adding, of not adding nutrients or what it would need to thrive and survive. You not only see it in lack of growth and lack of yield, but you also see it in um, the amount of pests that show up, the amount of weeds that show up. Because if you have a dominant um, plant doing what a dominant plant does is grow and have its roots go everywhere possible like a weed then you don't really need to uh you don't really need to care about weeding or you don't really need to care about like it spotting or getting diseased it's kind of like you know when you fortify your immune system in a nutrient-based way you're less apt to become sick if you're healthier you exercise you have all the vital macros and micronutrients in your diet, you don't get fat and diseased and lethargic, high blood pressure, you know, diabetic, you know, and your organs don't take that much heat and they do what they've been intended to do thanks to the assistance that you've allowed yourself to have via nutrients. Now, climbing up to here, and I'm gonna go slow, as slow as I can, because I don't want to disturb Mr. B right there. I don't want to get this before the sun sets. He's tentatively coming over now. I wonder if bees can sense the cell phone radiation. It's anecdotal, but you know, I, I believe that's something that comes to more of a belief system. There's like a basil back there that died because it's the same thing as the potato plant back there where like I heard a crack. And that's like literally the, the plant cell walls. Oh crap, the, the bee was coming close to me. Maybe it's because he smells, maybe I smell pretty to him. <laughs> I do have blonde hair, so like maybe I'm a flower. I'm a beautiful flower. That's literally the, the cell walls cracking when you hear like a, that snapping sound. Like when you bite into some celery. So that's literally you breaking the plant cell walls which you don't hear that with uh, human cells. You know, they're made up of membranes. That's more of a squish than a snap. That's your biology lesson for the day, I suppose. 
That's something I learned 10 years ago too, and I still remember that. That's what happens when you learn things at a slow pace. You tend to retain it better. So this is everything from adding in the secret formula from the Revolution Garden guidelines. And it's not even the full formula. I got the wrong extracts, so I'm missing one key component. But I gotta say, you know, not bad. It's not, it's not like something to gawk at. Actually, this leaf is pretty cool. That's a pretty big leaf. Um, these might be overplanted, you know, over, over here, but uh, over here, you know, still suffering a bit, you know, I got to figure out how I can further inoculate these guys and give the, or inoculate goodness into the, this, uh, that's my Italian gesture, I suppose, but <laughs> some goodness into these, uh, these good old plants. Carrots seem to be doing fine. Basil I'm a bit worried about because the, um, there's my shadow. <laughs> there's my there's my hair floofy in the shadow <laughs> but um the um basil i'm a bit worried about maybe it's getting too tall maybe i should snip it off at the top i don't know like is that gonna because it's it's flowering so that indicates it's going to seed or maybe it's because it's getting too cold out you know there are all these variables i don't really understand just yet to really grasp what uh is going wrong here but for the most part you know this seems to be successfully going right over here just over here still needs some work and i think that's going to take some slow progressive time effort and you know a little bit of tlc i think i'm going to greenhouse this in some kind of a rig and the learning curve is still going to be intimidating to get over so i'm like I'm worried, man. Like, I'm worried that my babies aren't going to flourish like over here. I'm so empathetic. Look at me. <laughs> but uh, this kale looks not bad. You know, like, considering how crappy the weeding was last week, um, or like a week and a half ago, you know, I'm not, uh, I I'm actually uh, satisfied with how everything's been you know, uh, progressing, you know, considering how cold it's been getting and, you know, the lack of nutrients. I, I'm definitely going to get that, that other bit of secret sauce to the, to add to this mix to help the roots, uh, open up their pores and be healthy and stuff like that. I didn't even know roots had pores, but it's very much like if I could give another analogy or parallelism, think of the roots much like the lining of the intestines. When we go to eat food the intestines is where it absorbs the nutrients so that's why it's so long so it has that longer pathway of nutrient absorption that's why people who have tapeworms become sickly looking because they're not getting any nutrients because there's this giant thing in them that is taking up the nutrients before it can be absorbed into the body so like a tapeworm weeds and other things that we don't want in our garden is like a tapeworm in our bodies where the roots in this, this system needs to be the most open and most uh, available or ready to, to have the uptake of nutrients. And I think um, that especially goes for root crops like the radishes and the, um, the carrots right here. These are radishes, by the way. I, if I haven't said that before, these are radishes. They're supposed to be. <laughs> but um, it, it's... The, the opening of the, the roots is very much like that, in that if you study biology, basic biology in 10th grade, I suppose, or probably even earlier, 8th grade, because they, they keep upping the standards of learning for today's youth and all that good stuff. That except for common core math. And if you disagree with me, you can fight me on that. Because <laughs> common core math seems to be like the least efficient way to learn fundamentals of math. I suppose it's a precursor to uh, complex thinking and analytical thought, but when when you're dealing with like seven-year-olds learning with it, it's like, come on, let's do the basics first, and you know, then we'll get to the complex uh, solutions further on. Actually, I thought that this—I don't know what this is supposed to be. Actually, I, I just planted things without even thinking, but. I know that this is some leafy goodness that is supposed to be there. I forget which, if it's collard greens or mustard greens. I don't, I don't know the distinctive di differences between them, 
but that is actually I thought they all died you know they're but they're actually growing between the carrot plants and they hopefully they have some form of symbiosis with each other I'm happy that I'm happier that it's getting there and I think what I'm gonna do for next week I have to get going now otherwise I would film me you know dumping that secret formula from the revolution garden program that James Fry made into the grow chamber but I have to get going soon but uh, let me do a slow shot from here to over here and this is week three and a half ish you know mid-september ish of the uh, revolution garden and I'll see you in the next video